350 times a minute, it is approximately 10 times louder than a modern pneumatic drill. So if you think the drills are used to dig, to dig the roads up, going off in this enclosed space, multiply that volume by roughly 10, and that's the sort of volume you're working in with these. So if you were using them on a regular basis, you could go deaf within two years. Um, it's also nicknamed the widow maker, okay? because uh, it kicks out loads of noxious fumes when you're using it uh, and because it tears through the coal so easily it generates huge amounts of coal dust so you're breathing all this in. It's 1913, you don't have the modern protections you might put a handkerchief over your nose and mouth, that's about it. So basically you're breathing all this rubbish in then you're slowly destroying your lungs. So again if you're using them on a regular basis in some cases it could take not just years but decades off your life. You might die in your 30s instead of your 50s. Yeah? And I might think, well, I need, I'm going to make use of it because it goes through the coal really, really quickly, much, much faster than a human being. So it's a way of getting a lot of coal out quickly. So you might think, well, I'll, I'll use it anyway. I'll make a bit of money quick. I wouldn't choose to use this because I know it's wrecking me, basically. Um, there's plenty of ways to die in a mine without making it worse for one of these, yeah? Explosions, fires, roof collapses were common, floods, that sort of thing. At this time, 1913, across the entire country, not just in County Durham, Across the entire country, a miner was killed every six hours, and the miner was injured every five minutes. So that's roughly a thousand. Keep it here too long, okay? Um, but this is real. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it's not plastic or wood or put in for effect. It is genuine, several million year old coal. We think this is space for one person to work because you're swinging a pick. It's quite dangerous. Maybe two, but we, we tend to think one. There's your coal pick that you use for your eight-hour shift. Is coal pick, not pickaxe, yeah? Um, dangerous because obviously if I hit you with that it's going to kill you basically but also just doing your job just hacking your way into the coal every now and again you can chip stone or you can chip metal deposits within the stone that can create a spark sparks aren't good in mines anybody know why sparks are not good in mines Explosion. explosions you get gases in mines so if you generate spark if you've got enough gas in the area at the time you could cause an explosion kill yourself maybe another hundred people in the area just doing your job, drains you out, it's still dangerous, you could cause an explosion. Um, the other thing was, incidentally, these would go blunt with use, the mine owner charged you to sharpen your pick for you again, so he's making some more money out of you. The <laughs> trick is be a mine owner, not a miner, frankly. Anyway, once you've dug your coal with that, dug your coal out, then you use a shovel like this, quite often called a shovel in this area, a shovel like that, to shovel your coal into the coal tub like we've got on the end of the railway. Now if you're working in a four foot six high seam, which is where we are at the moment, that's actually pretty luxurious, although I'm sure it doesn't feel that way to you, <coughs> but it's pretty luxurious to have this amount of space. So you'd probably do 10 to 12 of those tubs in a day. Unfortunately in County Durham, a lot of the coal seams are about that high, about 18 inches. So if you can imagine my stick is the roof, you would be crawling in, you would lie on your side, on your shoulder, and you'd be swinging your pick sideways to hack the coal out. And it wasn't unusual to have a couple of inches of water in the bottom as well, so you're lying in the water while you're, doing, while you're digging your coal, okay? The miners held a draw every three months, called a cattle draw, to decide which section of the mine you worked in. We've only come down 65 yards. This actually extended, where we turned right, that actually went straight ahead for about a mile and a half. And then about a mile right and a mile and a half left, I think it was. So there's miles of tunnels underground. So you'd, you'd have a draw to work out which bit of the mine you were going to work in. And it was the miners themselves that decided that was the only fair way to do it, right? You draw the 18-inch seam, it's harder work, it's more dangerous, and you can't make much money because you physically cannot get the coal out so easily. You haven't got the space. So you might only do three or four of those tubs in a day instead of 10 or 12. End of the three months, there was another draw. There was no rule that said you couldn't draw the 18 inch seam a second time, so you might get it for six months and not make much money, frankly. Back. Um, this thing here, hand drill, nicknamed a monkey drill, it's currently drilling into the coal seam there. Um, <coughs> the idea here would be that you dig by hand, you dig from floor level up to about 18 inches and in for about three feet or so, so you're creating a void underneath your coal. Drill a hole, or two if you needed to, pack it with black powder explosive and detonate so hopefully your coal ideally just drops in place, drops into the void that you've created, yeah? You don't want too much stuff flying out, obviously, because you're going to hit these things if it goes far enough up the tunnel. These are holding your roof up, so you don't want to risk damaging them. 
These ideally at the time would be Norwegian pine. Norwegian pine was popular as a pit prop because it'll talk to you. If the roof is starting to collapse in, the pit props will creak and groan and crack and splinter and give you some warning to get out. And many miners were killed by roof collapses. But at least these things will give you some chance that you might get out of the way before the roof comes in on you. Right? Uh, and finally, for anybody who's getting tired, which is probably quite a few of you, the miner's lamp. Uh, this is genuine, all right? it's not battery powered or anything, it is a real miner's lamp. That's roughly the flame that you would work by. I'm going to switch the electric lights off so you see how much light you get from one of these. It won't be bang on accurate because we have to get quite a lot of bleed over of light from further up the tunnel. But you'll get an idea, okay?